Where does poverty come from, and how do we get rid of it? In the beginning, there was no poverty because everyone had free access to the land. Gathering plants and hunting animals was the only way of making a living that people had up until 10,000 years ago. The land was the means of making a living, and no one could stop anyone from getting to it. We lived in groups of no more than 150 people. Life wasn't perfect, there was violence and even genocide, but on balance we had not caught the flu. That would come with a new way of making a living, agriculture. For a while, there was still no poverty. Same reason, everyone had free access to the means of making a living, which was still the land. But now, not just any land would do. To make a living, you needed access to the specific land where you had planted your crops. Soon some jerks got together and said, this land where you planted your crops, it's ours now. They had seized control of the means of making a living. And they said, we have a great idea. You keep farming this land and we'll take the crops. In return, we'll let you live on the scraps. And so here we have our answer to where poverty came from. It came from people losing access to the means of making a living. It's the same today, but today our way of making a living is capitalism. In capitalism, the means of making a living is capital. We don't make our living simply by farming anymore. We build things in factories and cook things in restaurants and make apps in tech companies. And of course we still do farm, mostly on huge farms with giant machines and all of that stuff is capital. But it's the same fundamental process as back when our way of making Making a living was farming. Back then, we used the land to make our living. Today, we use capital to make our living. So the answer to our next question, how do we get rid of poverty, is now obvious. Make more capital. But where does capital come from? The answer is, of course, Matt Damon. Matt Damon makes wells for African children and can come develop your economy too. But if Matt's not available, then let's go with the less sexy but massively scalable alternative, long-term large-scale investment. Creating capital through investment in massive quantities is the real way that countries not only provided clean water to their people, but also built up their means of making a living to become prosperous. That is what gives entrepreneurs the capital they need to invent things, start businesses, build factories, and gives governments the capital they need to make water and health systems, roads and bridges, and other odds and ends like the internet. Countries that have been pulling their people out of poverty all have one thing in common. Political and economic elites who were almost single-mindedly committed, at least for part of the day, to building up their country's means of making a living. Governments in these countries invest directly into infrastructure, R&D, and also industry. Business in these countries tends to reinvest profits instead of scrambling to give shareholders short short-term gains. And these countries have banks that are committed to building up their nation's means of making a living. Germany had non-profit banks, China had state-owned banks, Japan had private for-profit banks that were nevertheless created to make long-term investments into industry. Last century, in a fit of stupidity, America stopped doing all of these things, which is why Americans have been falling back into poverty. But America's elite got so super rich that other elites all around the world have been starting to give up on investment too, with their populations also paying the price. I know that long-term capital investment might not be the sexiest solution to poverty that you were hoping for, but it is straightforward and simple and actually works. There might even be a campaign already underway to create a public bank in your state. Let's do this.